Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at how you can determine and express restrictions on trig identities and expressions. So trig expressions and identities can have restrictions, or in other words, non-permissible values, or what you might have called in the past NPVs for short. And those are on the variables that are involved, just like other expressions and equations that you've seen and worked with in the past. But for trig identities, these might happen for several reasons. First of all, the expressions involved might have certain limitations for algebraic reasons, just like the expressions that you've worked with in the past, often having to do with the denominator or a square root involved or something like that. But the other reason is that the trig functions themselves might have certain values that are not permissible, as you've likely already seen in this unit. So we have a couple of examples we're going to look at here. So this first one, this is an expression, and we're going to work out the restrictions on that expression. So first of all, of my two things in my list up here, the expressions involved, if we look at those, we have sine x and cos x. Now, those two things themselves, there's no restrictions on sine and cosine. They're defined for all values of x. So no restrictions arise because of that. However, for this second point here, we're going to have a restriction on this expression. And it has to do with the denominator here. When you have an algebraic expression that has a denominator with a variable in it, you can have some restrictions that are a result of that. Essentially, in this case, that cos x minus 1, the denominator cannot be 0. So we're going to have restrictions because of that, that the denominator cannot be 0. So we have cos x minus 1 cannot be 0. Or in other words, if we go about solving that inequality, we have cos x cannot be 1. And then we have to think about what values of x are going to satisfy this. All right? And then we have to think about what values of x we're looking at there. I think the simplest way to think about what values of x, you're thinking about where is cosine 1. I like to think about the graph when I try to think about what values of x that is. So just think about the graph of cosine. Cosine starts at 1 up there. It hits 1 again at 2 pi. It hits 1 again at 4 pi. It would hit 1 the other way at negative 2 pi, and so on. Right? So if you made a list of those, I forgot 0 in there. But the way you can express that is you can just say x cannot be 2 pi times n, where n is some integer. n is any integer. So you can express the restrictions certainly like this, but sometimes you also see the restrictions written like this in terms of another trig function, or specifically in terms of sine and cosine. All right? So that's that one. We're going to look at a second one here. So in this situation, this is an identity, right? There's two sides to it. It's this equation here that's an identity. We're going to determine the restrictions on it. We're still going to look at the two different aspects involved here. So first of all, we're going to look at the trig functions involved. So those trig functions involved there, first of all, the sine and the cosine themselves have no restrictions. So we'll just note that again here. But the other ones involved here, namely secant and tangent, themselves have some restrictions. So tangent, tangent is equal to sine theta over cos theta. So if you think about what it is in terms of sine theta and cos theta, you can make sense of what restrictions it has. Tangent is undefined where cosine, that denominator, is 0. So the restriction on tangent is cos theta cannot be 0. And if you think about it again, I would go with the graph here. Think about the graph. Cosine where it's 0, cosine starts at 1. It's 0 there. It's 0 there. There's 2 pi again, and it's 0 there, it's 0 there, and there's 4 pi. So basically we have at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 
if you continued it the other way, you'd have negative pi over 2, and so on. So the values involved in that are theta can't be pi over 2 plus multiples of pi. So we're going to write that as pi over 2 plus pi n. All right, now the other thing is secant. Secant theta, our second function involved that has restrictions, secant is equal to 1 over cos theta. So for the same reasons as above, cos theta can't be 0, and theta can't be those values. So we don't need to write that again, but it's exactly the same values there. Now, the second thing is here for the expressions involved here. So if we think about the expressions involved here, this is going to have to do with the denominators here. So in this case, this denominator cannot be 0, and this denominator cannot be 0. So we'll look at those two one at a time here. So what we have here is that 1 plus tangent can't be 0, or in other words, tangent can't be negative 1 if you isolate that tangent on there. For this, it's not necessarily, if you're familiar with the graph of tangent, you can think about the graph of tangent the way we did for cosine, but thinking about where tangent is negative 1, or maybe what's simpler is think about where tangent is 1. Tangent is 1 where the angle, the reference angle, is pi over 4, 45 degrees, pi over 4, because you think about that little triangle there like that, and where it's negative 1 specifically is going to be in quadrant 2 and 4. So if that was pi over 4 and that was pi over 4, you'd have 3 pi over 4, right, as the first one. You'd have 7 pi over 4. If you went around again here, you would have 11 pi over 4 and so on. The values that it can't be there. So if we're going to try and write an expression for what those values can't be, we're thinking it's 3 pi over 4 plus half turns plus multiples of pi. Half turns are pi, so we're going to pick the first one, that one, and add or subtract multiples of pi here. So it's 3 pi over 4 plus pi times n, where n is an integer. And then we'll look at the other fraction on the other side of that identity. So the other denominator is sine squared, and we know that can't be 0. Sine squared being 0, if we square root both sides, the simpler version of that is sine can't be 0. And if we think about where that is, this is a case where I would think about the graph, because sine and cosine graph are not too difficult to think about what they look like. So there's the sine graph, more or less. And we're thinking about where it's 0. So it's 0 at 0, at pi, at 2 pi, at 3 pi, at negative pi, and so on. So if we're trying to write an expression for that, what we're going to write is we're going to write that theta cannot be, this is multiples of pi here, right? Multiples of pi. So we're going to say pi times n, and that's what we have. Now, so we've got all of our restrictions sorted out there, so we're going to put them all together. So essentially what we want to do here is we want to take the different ones that we have. So we have this one from the tangent and the secant. We have this one from the 1 plus tangent in the denominator, and we have this one from the sine squared in the denominator. So if we put all that together, we're more or less saying that theta cannot be pi over 2 plus pi n pi n, and then 3 pi over 4 plus pi n. Now, we can actually simplify this. It's good to write it in the simplest form possible. And the reason you can simplify this is if you think about what values each of these represents, what that represents and what that represents. So let's start with this one. This represented 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on negative pi, but this one represented starting there at pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, it fills in all the ones in between. If you think about it going around an angle in standard position, you have 0 pi over 2 pi, 
3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and so on. It's every quarter turn like that. So the simplest way to write that is just to say it is multiples of pi over 2. All right, it's multiples of pi over 2. It's multiples of a quarter turn. So those two together can be combined, and we can just say in simplest form this is pi over 2 n. And then, of course, we need to include this other one here, which is 3 pi over 4 plus pi n. So that's our restrictions in simplest form for that identity. All right, so that's a look at how you can determine and express restrictions on trig identities and expressions.